Hey guys, it's Kane here. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to show you the fundamentals of console applications in C Sharp. In a previous video, I have shown you how to get started uh, and basically show where where, where you, you can download Visual Studio Community Edition, which is free and available to you. And in this video, we are going to start with the console applications. So while this video is going to cover uh, a lot of you know fundamental stuff, it will not cover all the subjects regarding what you could do with the console applications. So I will basically show you how you can show data on the console, how you can get it and so forth. I will also try to limit each video with 10 minutes so that you can you know jump around and see what you could do uh, with, with these applications. So without wasting uh, any more time, let's get started. The first thing that we have to do is to go onto the file a new section and create a new project. Now this will pop up a new menu and you have to select Visual C Sharp on this one if you haven't selected it yet. And on that menu, we have to find the consoleapplications.net framework. So bear in mind that I'm also using uh, Visual uh, Co Studio Community Edition on the Windows 10 platform. So if you are a Mac user, the interface might be a little bit different than this. So I'm gonna go into the name part and name my project. Uh, the naming convention is very important in C Sharp. It's important to give meaningful names to your projects and variables as well. So I'm going to type first application as my first project. We can also say first console applications because probably in the future we have to create a, a one Windows form application. So I'm just going to name it as first console app and press OK. This will obviously create a new class for me, a new project which will have the program CS as the default class. Now CS represents C sharp and first console app is the name of the project as well as the namespace that I'm using. In fact, in, if you go to your uh, user account, uh, you can see that uh, these, these folders are being created under the, your user account source and uh, rep. Let's go there. And you can see the location of the projects that you have. So it's under user account, whatever username you have, source, or we go to the repos, and in here you can see first console app being created. So I'm gonna go back to the Visual Studio and you see that my class name is program. Uh, I'm not gonna change that, but if you have somehow want to change it, you can right click and go onto the rename part and change it as well. Now, because this class is an application class, it comes with a main method, which is the console entry to the program. Bear in mind that in a project, you are supposed to have only one class with the main method. So you can add more classes in here that can have main method, but at, at, at one run point, only one of them is going to be executed. So you have to go to the startup session of the project and change which one you wanted to start. So you can go into the startup in here, startup object and select it. First console application is the one that I want to run. Now you don't have to do this because we don't have any other class so it doesn't matter. But in the future if you have more than one class we have to select which one is going to be executed. Now once you selected it I'm just going to say save all and go back to the program. Now the uh, as we are going to uh, write our console application, everything should be inside the main for now, just like in C++. As a matter of fact, uh, your previous programming experience, whether it is in C++ or Java or whatsoever, is quite transferable here. Because C Sharp is essentially built on the idea to be uh, developer friendly, 
So whatever you know from C++ or Java or any other language is obviously very transferable here. The way that you define the variables, you write it, the syntax, you will see a lot of similarities in here if, if it's not completely identical. So uh, let's get started. So the first statement that I'm gonna write is system.console.write. You can type, you can use write or write line. And the difference is write line leaves an enter a new line afterwards where write is just, you know, doesn't do that. So if you want to say write line, we can put a uh, quotation marks inside and we can say hello and after hello there will be a new line we can also go into and say console.write and this time we are not going to have a new line afterwards and in the second part i'm just going to say oops hello world this is a very typical traditional thing like whenever you learn a new language the first statement uh, we usually write is hello world. It's just a tradition, I guess. So we'll, we'll you know, uh, use that tradition as well. So one of the things that you should bear in mind in here is that when you type system console right, right line, you can see that the console is actually underneath the system namespace. However, when you created your project, you already have this. You already told uh, your compiler when this program runs that I am already importing the system using directive. So this means that you don't have to use the system anymore. You can get rid of this line because it's already there imported. So you can simply type console write line or console write. We, we will also have some problems when we run this because the program is going to run so fast, so quickly that it will create what I call as splash screen problem. You may or may not have encountered this problem uh, in a different language, particularly maybe with C++. It just shows something so fast uh, on the console and it disappears very quickly. There's a way to fix it. It's quite easy to fix that part, but let's just uh, run this program to see what we're gonna get as the app. So I'm gonna save this and first thing I do is to build the solution. You can also press on Control Shift and B, which will obviously uh, compile the program and show us if there are any errors in it. So now that I compiled it, I can see that program succeeded with zero fails, which means that I don't have actually any uh, errors. Visual Studio is a, a quite intelligent integrated development environment so as you type along if there are any problems it will uh, underline it and that will come quite handy to you as well. So to run it we'll go on to debug and we're gonna select start debugging. You can also press on F5 if you want. Now as you can see on the program that it runs so quickly that I just see a splashing screen. And I, I don't even have enough time to see what is written on that screen. So to overcome that problem, we're gonna add another line in here and it will be console.readKey. This will make the cursor wait until I press a key on the keyboard. And this time, as I type this statement, I will be able to see what is being written on the console. And unless I don't press a key, it will just freeze in there and wait for me. So as you can see, uh, with the first line, it says, hello, and there is a new line underneath it because of right line, and underneath that, it says, hello world. So that's the first program, first console application you had written, well done. And we're gonna do something a little bit more complicated than this now. So we're gonna define variables, identifiers, and use them. Luckily, if you know uh, what are variables and identifiers, how these basically uh, run in a sequence, all of that information is directly transferable to C Sharp. So if you have done C++, Java, or any other language, the way that you type uh, the variables, the data types, they are almost the same. 
if not completely identical. So uh, in the second part, in this part, I'm going to type a string value and call it name. And next to it, I'm just going to type surname. So I have two string values, name and surname. And as you can see, Visual Studio uh, underlined them because I defined these variables, but I haven't actually used them yet. So I'm going to show you how you can get data from the console. So uh, just as before, we're going to type console right. And in this one, I'm just going to type console right line. And in this one, I'm going to ask the user to enter their name. So it's going to be enter your name. Let's put a question mark in here and put a semicolon at the end. And to get this, we are going to say something like console dot read line open close bracket. But we haven't identified where this is gonna be stored, so I'm gonna go back to the beginning and type name is equals to console read line. So now that the name value is used, uh, it no longer is underlined in here. We are going to follow exactly the same for the surname. And this time I'm gonna type right. Doesn't really matter which one you use. Uh, and I'm gonna type enter your surname. And put this on my cup at the end. Since this is not a question, actually, let me just remove the question marks. It doesn't make any sense, it's not a question. And uh, initialize whatever it is written to the surname, and exactly in the same way. So what it does in here that the entire line is read and initialized to this string line, name and surname respectively. You can put a backslash n if you want to, just as in you did in maybe in a different language. And what this does is that it leaves a new line and some space and it says enter your name and enter your surname. Now that you read this information, you can display it. Let's just try to display it. So let's write console dot write. and put an info about you. I'm gonna put two backslash in as a title and a little bit aesthetically put decorations next to it. And underneath it, I'm just gonna type the name and surname. Now there are multiple ways to do this. So there isn't one way of showing the data. Uh, I use uh, both ways interchangeably. So the first way is to write write line and put the quotation marks as you did before and put the value as your name is. You put a curly bracket in here and give it a number. The first one is zero and comma your surname is another one and that should be one. Now that you indicated where these values will be displayed, you can put a comma name and surname. And what happens is names name goes to and replace the uh, curly bracket zero in here, jumps in there, and surname is being replaced by this. So one uh, is actually surname and name is actually zero. There is another way of showing this. If you somehow don't like this way, you can use another way. And this time I'm gonna type right. And at the beginning, I'm gonna put a dollar sign. Then afterwards, I'm gonna put uh, the quotation. So what I'm gonna do in here, instead of using numbers, I'm just gonna put the curly bracket again but this time I'm gonna write the name here. Let me just put this. And 
also surname. Can also be displayed on here. And put the semicolon. So make sure that you have the console uh, read line at the end. And I'm gonna run it. So build the solution. If we have any errors, it will show it in here, remember. Uh, I'm not quite sure where we place the dollar sign, so let's just test this. So I'm running the application, it asks me to enter my name, so I'm gonna enter the name and I'm gonna enter my surname as well. And in here you see info about you, your name is Kane, your surname is this, but I think I misplaced the dollar sign, which actually I'm happy that I misplaced it because that way you can see that we have to carry this outside of the quotation mark. And now it shows the name and surname as variable, just as in here. So it's a good thing that I made that mistake because uh, a lot of, a big part of learning programming is going and fixing your errors, making sure that everything looks tidy, neat and nice and so forth. So I also didn't like that this part is like leaving me the next line to enter it and doesn't show it next to it. So I'm gonna say uh, right instead of right line and put a couple of backslash and in here just to show things tidy. So that should be your name is and then can also be displayed in here. So I'm gonna run the application and see what changes I have. So enter your name, I'm gonna enter my name, my surname, and info about you, your name is this, your surname is that, and name, surname can also display it in here. So what we learned from this video is that we learn how to write on the console, how to read an entire line, and we can show the values of the variables as well in an order using uh, the curly bracket 0 and 1 or you can directly put them inside just by using a dollar sign at the beginning of your console write statement. So as I said at the beginning of the video I am going to try uh, to limit each video around 10 to let's say 15 minutes so I'm gonna stop in here and in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to manipulate the data, how you can, you know, play around with this and do a little bit of arithmetics. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you around.